most of my salary is going into paying off my student loans right now. But even with that, after four years of residency, I'm going to basically be in $50,000 more debt. When it gets to like 45 million people, they're like, okay, maybe this is systemic. Maybe this isn't just a couple of people who made bad decisions. Maybe this is actually an orchestrated scam. Millions of Americans are struggling right now with student loan payments. President Biden's debt relief efforts have led to the biggest drop in student debt in two decades. Borrowers still owe a collective $1.57 trillion. Yes, that is trillion with a T. I'm happy to welcome Blake Zeff, director, and the main subject of Lone Wolves, the new documentary about the student debt crisis. It is premiering Sunday, 10 p.m. Eastern, right here on MSNBC. Blake, congratulations. Thank you. Thanks so much for being here. I mean, this Pleasure. is one of those issues where there's just a, a big generational divide. And, and I, I mean that in terms of both the lived experience of student debt and the perception of student debt. What has changed in the past few decades? It's a great question and a great point because a lot of times you have older people who, you know, really mean well. They just don't really understand the issue. They say, I don't get it. You know, when I went to college, we worked our way through it and it was fine. You know, I talked to Senator Schumer for this interview. He said, you know, same thing for him. And what has happened was back then college for many people was $2,000. Now I've been going around to colleges for the last couple of weeks screening this film and talking with the students. Some of the schools I went to, it's $85,000 a year And it's to not to just colleges. like fancy schools. No, not, yeah, exactly. Even state schools are tens of thousands of dollars now. And so, you know, back then, some people did have student debt, but it was very, very small. And so you could get out from under that. But now these numbers are so high, it's really spiraled out of control. If I can just say one other thing Please. about the generations. Yeah. It's not just a young person problem. So that's actually right. a misconception right. that these people have because, you know, we talk with Representative Ayanna Presley in, in, the, in the film. I actually have that sound. Do you mind if we play it? Please, go right ahead. Play that sound from Congresswoman Presley. Within my district, I have senior citizens living on fixed incomes, 76 years old, still paying on student loans. It's an economic justice issue. It's a gender justice issue in that women disproportionately bear the burden uh, and black student uh, borrowers are five times more likely to default on their loans than our white peers. So it's a racial justice issue. Yeah, I mean, I was just going to say, you know, there are people who have are paying down student loans while they should be getting Social Security. And this is crazy. Most people don't know this. You can actually have your Social Security garnished if you are behind on your student loans and you're of age to get Social Security. Same thing with your income, by the way. Um, people can even have their professional licenses revoked. Think about that. You have nurses who are working really hard and they're behind on their student loans, not because they're <laughs> not, not for the fun of it, but because they, they're not making enough to, to pay for them. And then we're going to revoke those licenses. The system is really, really uh, uh, very difficult for a lot of people. I would also layer on to this conversation about the, the generations that if you are a person who wants to sell your home, it matters that you have a generation of people who are able to buy that home and who are not instead saddled with a student debt. But I'm not going to take us on that tangent. Okay. You talked to so many people. I wonder, was there one story that sort of jumped out, surprised you most? Yes, there was. I mean, there's so many, right? There, and everyone knows someone who has student debt, 45 million Americans, like you said. But one of the, you, you showed uh, footage before of this woman named Vivian, who's a doctor. I think a lot of people have this idea, oh, doctors and lawyers, we don't need to help them. Uh -huh. They can make tons of money. Mm -hmm. I have a little bit of a news flash. This is exclusive to your viewers. Not everyone who goes to law school is there to defend oil companies. Some of them, some of them actually want to, you know, work in public interest law or civil rights law, right? Or public interest. We want them to do those types of things. Vivian was a doctor and she grew up um, in a very uh, difficult circumstance. Her mother died of cancer when she was young. Parents didn't speak English. Um, they did not have a lot of money. And she made it her life's mission to become a doctor, to work her butt off, to get into a top college, top med school, so that she can then be a doctor and work at a clinic, what they call a low resource clinic for communities that don't have a lot of money. And that was her dream. And that's why she worked so hard to go to med school. Well, by the time she graduated, she had $250,000 in debt and couldn't afford to work in those types of settings. That was her whole you know, cause in life, the whole thing she wanted to do. And so there is a cost to society when something like that happens. We're, we're making it hard for people to be of service to the community because of this debt. So that kind of thing happened over and over again, I think would be very surprising to people. You, had, you, re you referenced your conversation with Senator Schumer. You also had a conversation with Senator Durbin. Let's take a listen. So Senator Durbin has this bill that would reverse that provision. So now you would be able to get rid of that debt through bankruptcy. Yeah. And Senators Cornyn and Hawley just joined and said they would be for that. So that's got a bipartisan between hey, listen, now. It's something I'd look at. It wasn't until it was all over. You look back and said, oh, my God, two lines in a bill changed the lives of millions of Americans. 
you are the person who has been pushing for a solution to this. You have a bill that would essentially reverse this. Yes. Does this bill have a chance of actually getting passed? First things first, committees. The bill has to go through the committee. The bill has to go through, where are we? Okay, this is wild. So I don't know if everyone watching this knows this, but student debt is basically one of the only debts you really can't get rid of through bankruptcy. There's a little loophole that says if you can demonstrate undue hardship, you can, but the courts have basically said that unless you have serious cancer or something like that, you're not going to be able to. So you and I could go to Vegas tonight and go gambling and lose $10 million. We could discharge that debt through bankruptcy or excessive overshopping, whatever, a million other things. But student debt, you can't. And that's important for two reasons. One, obviously, some people might want to actually go through that process. But not everyone will. So the second reason is because there's a structural problem in the student lending system, where if the college lenders know that pay repayment is totally guaranteed, because there's not even a, a possibility of bankruptcy, they will lend out money to anyone at any amount, right? And the colleges know that too, and they jack up their prices at will, essentially. And so that's why the prices keep getting higher and higher and higher. And really quick, this is crazy. This all happened in 1998 in a Higher Education Act that was like 300 pages. This was two lines snuck into the bill, and that's what Senator Durbin was talking about there when he said no one even noticed. People like him voted for it, they didn't even know it was in there. So now here we are over 20 years later, and a lot of what we talk about in the movie is can this be reversed, can this be fixed? And I have some conversations, conversations with Senator Schumer and Durbin at the end that are very interesting and have implications for this lame duck Congress. What a wonderful way to tease the <laughs> documentary and to tell folks to stay until the end. Blake Zaff, congratulations Thank you. on an incredibly important project. Again, Lone Wolves, it premieres this Sunday night, 10 p.m. Eastern, right here on MSNBC.